each 20 of the 1990 Tour de France, a 45 and a half kilometer individual time trial around Lac de Vassivier, and surely this is the day when we'll find out who will win the yellow jersey, Greg LeMond or Claudia Ciappucci, and overall victory in the 1990 Tour. The Italian, remember, leading the American by just five seconds going into this time trial, but LeMond is the favorite going into it. He won the time trial here five years ago in 1985, and many people feel he can win it quite comfortably. And here we see coming in Dagato Larison, the fastest man on the course so far. It looks like he's going to get inside the time of Lubio. Dagato Larison, one hour, four minutes and 41 seconds. And that is the leading time so far on this 45 and a half kilometer course around Lac de Vassivier. So Dagato Larison with the best time over the finish line, one hour, four minutes and 41 seconds is the target for the rest of the riders that's still the best time he was one of the early men out but out on the course we have some men really burning it up Raul Alcala and Miguel Indurain are just two of them yes indeed uh, Raul Alcala has gone through the 10 kilometer point in 14 minutes and one second and that is some 13 seconds faster than Lazaretta and that is the fastest on the course so far uh, the 22 kilometer mark which is the second uh, point on the course Alcala has gone through in 29.28 Indurain has gone through in second place, uh, 32 seconds behind. Uh, we're now looking at the race leader, Le Le Greg Lamont is two minutes in front of him. They've just started a couple of minutes, neither of them, three minutes rather, neither of them have gone through the first checkpoint yet. So Claudio Ciappucci has five seconds of a lead on Greg Lamont. Lamont starting three minutes ahead of him. And Ciappucci now trying to keep his own steady pace, but he knows of course that Greg LeMond has had success here at Lac de Vassivier before. He won here in 1985, and ironically in 1985, we had very good performances from Stephen Roach and Sean Kelly, both of them in the top five on that occasion. LeMond winning in 1985, virtually the same length of course, 45.7 kilometers. LeMond won from Hino with Phil Anderson in third place, Sean Kelly was fourth, and Stephen Roach fifth. The news today of the Irishmen is not great, you see Larson's time there, that's the top time, the leading time so far, 104.41. Stephen Roach was one hour, eight minutes and one second. Sean Kelly was one hour, ten minutes and 18 seconds. So Kelly, five and a half minutes down, Stephen, three minutes time. But uh, really, all talk is between the two leaders, Chibucci and Lamont. Now, there's a few factors really involved here today. One is the heat, and it is reckoned to be 33 degrees out on that course today. So heat is a big factor, and who can withstand the heat the best? The other type of heat, which is the pressure that's on those both, both of those riders, Le Mans feeling very much the pressure of France on him because he is in a French team. Ciappucci, uh, whilst he has claimed to be relaxed the last few days, surely he must be under pressure also in that race leader's jersey, knowing Le Mans, uh, Le Mans' performance in time trials in the past. And next, fact, if you look at the performance test this year in time trials in the Giro d'Italia, Looking at the 33 kilometer point there, and before we go on to that, Indurain gone through in 43 minutes, Ruz Cabastani 35 seconds behind. Alcala still has to arrive at that point. Okay, well, let's concentrate for a moment on just the two leaders, although Indurain, Ruiz Cabastani, and Alcala are certainly in line for taking this stage. But let's concentrate, as you say, Pat, on Le Monde and Chipucci and their battles in the time trials. They've competed against each other this year in the Giro d'Italia and the Tour de France, and it's fairly even. It is fairly even, it would be level really as to which of them, which of them is the best. In the Giro, on the first stage, Le Monde was 20th, one, uh, 31 seconds behind the stage winner. Chiapucci was uh, 24th, 34 seconds, so only 3 seconds separated them. On the 10th stage, uh, Chiapucci was 19th, 4 minutes and 3 seconds behind, and this is a long stage similar to today's one, and Le Monde was 20th, 4, 6 seconds behind, so only 3 seconds separated them there. On the 19th stage, Chiapucci was... Um, fourth at 1.33 and Le Mans was 12th at 2.36 so Chiapucci had an advantage of 1 minute 3 seconds that was in the Giro so Chiapucci came out of the Giro on top in the time trials OK but in the Tour de France Le Mans has been the man who's done well here's Johan Bruyneel coming in and a good time for Bruyneel but as I say we're going to concentrate on the comparison between Chiapucci and Le Mans and Le Mans has done a lot better in the time trials in the Tour de France and it could be argued that Le Mans wasn't as fit as he should have been perhaps in the Giro certainly building up towards his fitness for the Tour de France. Yes, well, a lot of people have said, and Le Mans himself says, that he built everything around the Tour de France, and uh, he went into the Tour of Italy not on the best of form, and rode himself into form, and has come through there. Um, but even looking at the statistics of the Tour, uh, Le Mans in prologue was four seconds down, um, and Chiapucci was 26 seconds down. So there wasn't a great gap between them. In the seventh stage, Le Mans was fifth at 2.11, and Chiapucci was 15th at 2.49. Um, in the 12th stage, 
Le Monde was fifth again at 56 seconds. Chipuji was eighth at one minute nine seconds. So again, not very much in between them. You know, so it's very very close, and really, it's a lot will depend on the character of the guys today. Look at this. Le Monde has come through the first time check. We should be getting Chipuji in the next two minutes or so, and a very good ride by Le Monde early on. Just seven seconds behind Eric Breuking, Alcala in there as well. So Breuking still the fastest man at 10 kilometer mark. Alcala second, Le Monde in third place, although Alcala seems to be missing off the screen there, but Alcala certainly starting that first 10K well. Well, we thought Alcala was really eating up the course in the first part of this time trial today, the way he started. There's Le Monde gone through only a second behind him. That all goes very well for Le Monde. He has started well. He obviously has relaxed and got into the into the ride. Another thing that I noticed, now we haven't seen any pictures of Le Mans, but as he left the, the start point, he was on um, a disc wheel, low profile bike. Here's Chipucci, and he's on a normal bike. Now, of all the riders that have finished here today, the vast majority of them have used disc wheels and low profile bikes. Chipucci, for some reason or other, is sticking to his normal road bike. He may rue the day that he took that decision at some stage. 18 seconds Ooh. down. So 11 seconds already, Chapucci has lost to Le Monde. Le Monde is virtual race leader on the road, but there's still a long way to go in this time trial. A long way to go, but most people will sit back at this point and say it's all over. Le Monde has burned up the first 10 k's, but of course, it's all about pacing yourself. There's still 35 and a half kilometers to go, and there would be a tendency in both riders to tear into it early on and build up a lead. But it would indeed, because it's a psychological thing now. As soon Le Monde will get information from his team car behind to say that he's already gained 18 seconds or 11 seconds he's in the lead over Chipucci. That'll give him a psychological boost. Likewise, Chipucci will be told by his car, you're losing time, that will motivate him to go harder. But it is a long, hard time trial in very, very difficult and very warm and very, very hot conditions. And really, a rider can blow after 40 seconds with or 40 kilometers, only five kilometers ago, a rider can blow and struggle in over the last five kilometers and can lose any advantage gained prior to that. So certainly a good start for Greg LeMond at the 10 kilometer mark. He has 11 seconds of a lead over Claudio Giuliapucci, but there's still more than 30 kilometers to go. To go through the general classification as it stood this morning, starting Chapucci was in the lead five seconds in front of Le Mans. Breuking 3.31 behind, Delgado 3.42 behind, La Gioretta comes next, 5.29 behind, Bugno comes next, 7.29 behind, Chosas is next, 7.49, Krikilian then comes at 8.40, Hampton at 9.34 and Para at 11.30. That's the top 10 in the overall classification. So Johnny Bunyo, the only man so far to win two stages on this tour. Took both of them narrow finishes, but he still took two stages. He also won the Giro d'Italia for Johnny Bunyo. It's been a great year. And here is Greg LeMond wearing the rainbow jersey. But if he stays with this 11 second lead over Claudio Chiabucci, he'll be wearing the yellow jersey tomorrow into Paris, down the Champs Elysees. See the Scott Hamelbars there. Le Mans boosted by the fact that he got such a significant lead of 11 seconds over the first 10 kilometers. Well, he certainly uh, seems to be not that comfortable at the moment, actually. He's changing around, moving around a lot, and out of the saddle and into the saddle, and um, trying to get his rhythm going. He doesn't know which gear to be using there. He's changed gears about twice there now the last 100 meters or so, and now he's got himself settled down. He needs to be drinking. He needs to drink because under the intensity 33 degrees out there today uh, he's going to need quite a lot of drink that looks like Gilles, yes, Gilles Delion uh, a very good rider Gilles Delion coming in here 1536 and um, this one of the rising stars of French cycling this course today is a very undulating course it's up and down and up and down and to some extent that might not suit Le Mans because he likes a good solid steady course that he can get into a good rhythm and power along and um, this time trial today may suit Chibucci a little bit more and uh, the heat really is the same factor for both. Uh, Le Mans comes from Los Angeles, he'd be well used to heat. Chibucci coming from Italy likewise. Well, wouldn't it really be a tremendous last 15 kilometers or 20 kilometers if we could get Chibucci to take back some of that time on Greg Le Mans. Le Mans working very hard here as you see. His hat turned backwards. Again, still not really sure about whether to stay in the saddle or get out of the saddle as Pat was saying earlier. Now he's still using quite big gears and he's trying to use his power to get him up these hills and try and gain the advantage on the hills but his problem is that as he's getting to the top of the hill his, his legs are fading a little bit he's having to go back into the saddle and change down very undulating rolling course there's the situation at the second time point 
22 kilometres. Alcala just ahead of Broikink at 22 kilometres. Indurand more than half a minute behind, just ahead of La Llorette. Luis Cabestani is there and shows us. So the Spaniards filling four of the first six places, the Mexican first and a Dutchman in second place. Well, that really just goes to show to some extent uh, two things. One, that it's a climber's course, and two, that the heat is a factor because the Spaniards really come into their own on, in, on the very hot conditions and on these hilly courses. Yeah, so it's very difficult to tell with Le Mans because he's a rider who, who rides with his power all the time and he powers the big gears. He's got very heavy thighs, very heavy calves, and he drives on and pushes on. And you might think he's not moving fast over the course, but he's using his power and he's actually driving on at quite a fast speed all the time. Pedro Delgado, that's Induran, coming toward the finish. Delgado still out in the course, and Induran is going to get inside the time of Ruiz Cabestani. He has a minute to get inside in the last. Great performance from Induran. This could be a stage win, winning time. Who knows? Alcala and Brighton still going well, but Induran going very well. Induran has already won a stage, the stage to Lozardi Den, and he's going to go close to it here. Certainly, I'd imagine a top five time from Miguel Induran. One hour, three minutes and 20 seconds, well inside Ruiz Cabestani's time. So Miguel Indran takes the lead on this 20th stage of the Tour de France. Here's his teammate, Pedro Delgado. We got a glimpse of him just before we saw Indran coming into the finish. Disappointing tour overall for Pedro Delgado, even though he's fourth overall. Interesting looking at Indran's time there. Le Mans went through 22 seconds, 22 kilometer point, one second in front of Indran or three seconds rather in front of Indran, so that gives you a measure of the, the, the performance of Le Mans. That the there you see the favourites again, Broikink in that the lead, Le Mans at 27 seconds, Chibucci down there, 58 seconds behind Broikink, subtract that, Chibucci time from Le Mans and you're left with the 31 seconds of a difference. So 31 seconds, Le Mans going well, Delgado chasing his teammates time, Miguel Indran who's the overall Stage leader at this stage, one hour, three minutes and 20 seconds. Can Chibucci get back? Greg LeMond out in front at the 22 kilometer mark. He's a lead of 31 seconds on Claudio Chibucci. But while you're gone to the break, Raul Alcala has come in with a time of one hour, three minutes and eight seconds. Great ride by the Mexican, and that's the best time overall on this stage. 20, 45 and a half kilometer time trial at Lac de Vassivier. We've been joined by Stephen Roach. Stephen, at this stage, Chibucci in big trouble. Well, it's a bit early to say yes. Like, Le Mans has gone through the 20-kilometre mark, of course, ahead of him. But the real race starts at 15 to go, so it's going to start really now because uh, if Le Mans has really gone from the gun, like the final, like I can tell you about it, <laughs> I'm well placed to tell you about it, like the final is very, very hard. There's two or three little climbs now in the final where you have to go down, go down to the small ring. And this is the reason why these two boys are taking the normal bikes instead of the other, instead of the, the funny bikes. But um, you need to kind of all the, you can get all the force you can into the bike. So at this stage, you're not riding off Chibucci at all? No, not at all, because this morning when I spoke to him, he was saying to me, like, what should I do? And we were just t talking about it, and we are saying, well, my opinion is take off, and don't worry about it the time that Le Mans is doing. Just try not, not to let him get too far away, but always keep a bit for the final, because if you can do a really good ride in the final, you can take back an awful lot of time, because it's very, very hard. Right up until the last, the last 800 meters, it, it climbs right up from, from 10 to go. It's climbing nearly all the time, up and down, like. So the battle is still on there, you get an idea of this. Hilly, foresty climb that the riders have around the lake here. Greg Lamont, as I say, at the last time check, 31 seconds in front of the Italian. But Stephen Roach saying, don't ride him off by any means. Still a long way to go. One thing at the moment as well is it's getting very, very hot out there. And like I'm in now about the quarters of an hour and the, 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 the tarmac was starting to, to melt. And that can be a, a big disadvantage now as well. And it can, it can hold you to the road. Like, so if your legs are anyway bad at all, and all of a sudden the, the thermic atom starts holding you back, it can be very, very demoralizing as well. In terms of temperament though, and when Chief Gucci hears that he's 31 seconds down, will that bother him on the day that's in it and the pressure that is on him? Well, I'm sure like of course he wants to win the Tour, but he knows he can finish first or second. So um, he's nothing really to lose. If you just take a look at Le Mans here, the way he's zigzagging on the bike, like it's been rumored the last few days that he has a bit of a bit saddle sore, and I think that kind of proves it now that he's, he's not really actually as, as straight as he would be on his bike normally. Yeah, Pat McQuaid was making that point that over the last 10 k's he's been out of the saddle, back in the saddle, and very unrelaxed. He seems to, he seems to find it very difficult to find a rhythm because he's in the saddle. Look, as we saw there, he's slightly bit out of the saddle, and I mean there was no purpose in that there. And uh, he's, he's moving around, he's up and down, he's changing gears. And I mean, having said that, he's still flying through this course, yeah. and he went through 22 kilometres third fastest. So. 33 and a half kilometre point. Eric Broikink is going even better than Alcala, his PDM teammate. Look at that time. Six seconds inside 
Alcala's time. Rocking going very well indeed here. But of course, the two leaders still have to come, uh, Chibucci and Le Mans. Le Mans, like, sometimes, like, we often remark about it within ourselves, like, in the neutralised zone before they even start. Like, Greg goes straight down into the 13, 14. Like, we're on the 42, 16, just standing along, just waiting for us, hoping the race doesn't start too quickly, and Greg's just standing along there in the 13, 14. We said to ourselves, well, he's crazy riding along in these big ears, but that's Greg, you know, he's, he's got a fierce amount of strength. Fabio Parra coming in, 106.35 at the moment, coming towards the finish. He's in 10th place overall. Not a bad time, compared to Alcalas, it doesn't look too good, but reasonable time for Fabio Parra, the Colombian, 19th overall. Tell us, Stephen, we see Freiking there in the shot down there. He's got a low-profile disc wheel, and yet, uh, as, we, as we can just see there, yet both Le Monde and Chipucci have decided to do, use normal bikes. Le Monde at least taking the advantage of the, or whatever advantage, the Scott handlebars. Um, what, what's your opinion on, on that situation? Well, I think it's a really a 50-50 decision. If you find you can get down the, to the stands with a low-profile bike quickly, then it's good to use a low-profile bike. But you've got to be prepared to horse up the last few hills, where it's very, very hard. But with a normal bike and a, a kind of spoke wheel, it makes the bike a little more responsive. And you can get down the ascents very, very nippy. You're much more in control of the bike. And then towards the last the last few steep uphills, with a normal bike, you can hold the top of the, the brake levers and kind of horse your way over them, where it's difficult with these low-profile bikes and with the, back, the disc wheel on the back. So, but it's, um, like I said, Le Mans, um, Brooking is doing the best time at the moment, but it'll be interesting to see his last 15 kilometers, because that is actually the, last, the final, the, the hardest part of the course. And he's on that now. He's just gone through the banner, as you saw. 10 k's to go for the Dutchman. But at the moment, he's on course for a very good time. The Brookings time at 33 kilometers, 42 minutes, 44 seconds. Alcala went through there six seconds behind. Injuran went through 25 seconds behind. And now the time of Le Mans gone through 33.4 kilometers. That's 43 minutes and 10 seconds. Breaking time 42-44. Le Mans went through there some 20 seconds, 26 seconds behind Breaking. So he's actually holding the, the, if you would call it a disadvantage to Breaking at 22 kilometers. Le Mans has held him over the next 10 kilometers. So we'll have to wait a couple of minutes now to see the time of uh, Chapucci going through that point. There's confirmation. Breaking, Alcala, Injuran, Le Mans, Le Yoretta, and Ruiz Capistani, the leading six at that point. Just one more time to be checked there. And that's Claudio Cipucci. Here's Andy Hampson from the 7-Eleven team. The tour began so well for the American team with Steve Bauer in yellow jersey for a week. But Bauer having a disappointing week in the mountains. Andy Hampson coming in 23rd today. And he's in ninth place overall. He certainly seems to have settled a bit more now, Le Monde. He's um, drinking, of course, and changing gears now, but he's keeping the position a little more comfortable looking. Interesting that the French director is giving us a lot more pictures of Le Mans than Chipucci at this stage. Le Mans and a French team. So in the next minute or two, we'll be getting Chipucci's check time. 31 seconds behind Le Mans, remember, at 22 kilometers. We certainly have to have contained it at the 33 kilometers. You can see the black stuff there. That's actually the, the, the thermic of melting. If you see the amount that would have had to avoid it, like it's, um, you're all the time, sometimes you can put the head down and keep going, but on this course now towards the final, you have to be very, very careful because going into it makes the, 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 the small stones stick to the tires, which can help them puncture, and it gets blocked under the brakes as well. If you see that Lamont has a carpet nolo brake on the back of it, and yesterday he had the same problem with the stones stuck to the tire, and it blocked up his back wheel. So you have to be very, very careful not to go through, through too much of this, um, of the black the thermic of melting. Of course, you, you may not know, but Sean actually has two punctures out there today. So that's, that probably um, verifies what you've been saying. Sure, yeah. Here we see Chipucci now coming through. 31 seconds down at the last time check. The Italian has it all to do in the next 15 kilometers. Huge crowds again out there. Most of them will be supporting Le Mans, as Stephen says, riding for the French team. It's amazing though that this morning I was out there around the course and um, even yesterday on the road like a lot of French people are saying Ali Claudio, give us a surprise, surprise us. Yeah. Like Le Mans has done too much crying and humming and moaning over the last couple of days, uh, painting and everything, you know. That some people are kind of getting a bit browned off from now. Yeah. That Caputi just says, oh well I'm just riding my bike and it's going to see how it goes, you know. Whereas people don't like a moaner too much. 
He has a, a certain charming quality about him, Chibucci, all right. Well, he's Italian. <laughs> So here he is, Claudio Cipucci. We should be getting that check time shortly. In fact, I think it's coming. There through. it is. 44.27 for Cipucci, 43.10 for Le Mans. So he's now gone over a minute down on Le Mans at the 33 kilometer mark. So I think the writing is really on the wall for Cipucci now. He's one minute and 17 seconds down on Le Mans at this stage. So in fact, on that stage, there was a huge 46 second advantage gained by Greg Le Mans between the second time check at 22 k's and the third one at 33. So one minute and 17 seconds for Greg LeMond. There's no way Chibucci can get that back at this stage, Stephen, no? It's, it's a loss. It's a loss, you know. It's, um, Greg really has to have a really bad turn for him to do it. And if you, if you take um, consideration to get the pictures we've seen of Capucci, he isn't really at his ease either. Like, he's on, not on the point of the saddle. So, like, LeMond isn't having a very handy ride there either, as we can see. It's, um, it's a long drag up. This is where you said he starts climbing really in the last 10 k's is probably all uphill. Nine k's to go, you can see this. Uh, it's about two, two and a half kilometer drag here. And you can see Greg is looking for hair, you know. Remember when the climbing was tough in Los Den, Greg Lamond was up there very prominent and very aggressive. And he'll know now at this stage, he'll have got that time, Jake, I'm sure. But Greg, actually, this morning, you heard him saying to a journalist that he doesn't want any time checks. All he wants to know is if I'm ahead or if I'm behind. But he doesn't want to know what, actually, the, the time he has. There's the confirmation. Le Mans, one minute and 17 seconds ahead of Chipucci. Yet Chipucci on these pictures looks to be much more comfortable going up the hill, whether it's that he's pushing a lower gear he or is, heading yeah. a lower gear. Um, but that, that he might be actually losing ground in pedaling the lower gear even at that. Well, he, he may do, but it might help him recover towards the end. Like, uh, if he uses too big of a gear, when he hits the, like, uh, Capucci, you must remember, is three or four kilometers behind Le Mans. Uh, so when he hits, he hits these hills that Le Mans is actually beside Le Mans on a few minutes ago, he will actually blow. So, like, it may be a good thing to keep the gears down, but it's still a minute, 17 seconds is, is difficult to take back, I think. It's quite incredible, isn't it? I mean, this will be his third victory now, and he's in second place. And he's a fantastic record. He has, yes. Yeah, he's got a fantastic record. Like, he's... He's had a great choice of teams apart from last year. Like riding with Levy Claire was an incredible team as well. Now riding with his dad team, it's incredible. Also last year he won it, well he won it not, not by luck because he never won a Tour de France, by luck only. Yeah. But um, he had, had the advantage of not having a good team and being able to make the most of everything of everybody else's team. But um, this year he's got a super team behind him and if he hasn't got a team behind him this year, he definitely would have won the Tour because the stage in Toulouse are then the other day, like they, they, worked, they worked incredibly well for him when Capucci was in front. Well, as Capucci drives on here chasing Le Mans, we should also acknowledge that the internationalization of cycling now with Le Mans doing well, obviously with yourself and Sean, but last year Le Mans chosen as the American Sportsman of the Year for the first time, etc. In a way, it's a boost for cycling and taking the strength of cycling away from the traditional areas, isn't it? It is, like it's just a big real turn. There's new countries coming into the four now, where before you only had Spain, uh, Belgium, Italy, France, where in the last decade we have we had a bit of Ireland, um, we had a bit of America now with Greg LeMond, the uh, Alcala, the Mexican, the Colombians coming across. Like it's um, it's been verified now a lot, and the wheel is turning again. And hopefully, hopefully there'll be some more Irish guys coming over, take over our place, because I'm not going to stay here forever. <laughs> Gianni Bonio now coming in, sixth place overall. Bonio, it's been a good tour for him, very good season for him with winning the Giro and two stages here. And he's going to break an hour and six minutes here. So Johnny Bunyo coming in to finish what's been a very good Tour de France for him. Stephen, what about um, talking about the future again? This tour, one of the big stories of this tour has been the emergence of the East Europeans and the Russians and so forth. And East Germans, Ludwig winning the green jersey, Konichev winning his stage. That surely is going to increase now in years to come as well. And they're going to be the hungry riders looking for, looking for fame and fortune. It definitely will be definitely will be great for, for cycling, but he must also... Oh, we see Larry Oretta coming in and going very close to that time of Raul Alcala, but Larry Oretta just decided still a great performance from the little Spaniard, just missing out on Alcala's time, but Larry Oretta, again, another one of the good performance this year. There you see, at 40 kilometers, Broiking still ahead of Alcala, and in fact, stretching his lead on the Mexican. Broiking going superbly, now stretching his lead over Alcala from 6 seconds at 33 kilometers to 18 seconds here, he's going superbly. 
But you, sorry, Stephen, you're making the point there about the East European. It's German, yeah. Like, you must remember that these guys have been professionals since they were taken out of the prom as well. Like, we're giving them a lot of a lot of media coverage and everything now, saying that the East Europeans and everything doing well and everything else. They have been professionals for a long time. But the difference is, which you have to be very careful, is before they were <coughs> they were looked after. They had a house and they were everything was paid for. And they did the ro go to rollers every morning. They went to, went to the shops and the bikes. And everything they did was for cycling. Whereas now they must um, do everything themselves. So they must have their own look after their own house, look after themselves, their tax problems and the, the, the problems of every general person. So that may, not, then that may not be a good thing in the end for them. Like before, they rode their bike and got results and they were, they were, they were looked after. Whereas now, they must get results. If they don't get results, they don't get paid. Right. So it can, that can be a difference for them. That's the overall situation at the finish line. Sile Yoretta just missing out on Alcala's time there. Injuran in third place, Ruiz Cabastani in fourth, Lauritsen fifth and Luvio in sixth place. The Spaniards certainly seem to be going well. Here's Claudio Giopucci, one minute and 17 seconds behind Greg LeMond. Must be hard for him now to try and stay cool, stay calm, as he tries to eat into that lead. Well, Stephen is leaving us now, Stephen. For all your help, your first tour finish since you won it in 87. I'm sure you're glad, assuming you get to Paris. <laughs> well, I'm hoping that this is the, the objective, you know, but um, for me, it's like, okay, it's disappointing that for a lot of people back home and everything else that it didn't do well. But for me, finishing the tour was an achievement for myself. But having finished one, I've only written one in three years, and uh, uh, two in three years, my first one to finish. So, um, and I hope now, like that, the, all the effort I put into this one will pay in the, in the months to come. Okay. And would you make any small little prediction for next year's tour? Well, like I can never say, like what you what you can do tomorrow. You don't do whatever you can do today. You don't do tomorrow. So tomorrow is another day. <laughs> but um, like I'm doing my best now. I'm ha very happy that my season's going well so far. I've, all I wanted to do was have a good season this year. So far, it's gone very well. Even though I was a bad place in the tour, I've had a reasonably good tour myself physically. So um, I want to finish the season now in good health and look forward to preparing the next season with full of ambition. Great. Well, Stephen, thanks very much for joining us. And well done, Stephen and Sean Kelly, both finishing today. Stephen's time, 1.08 and 1 second. Sean Kelly, 1 hour, 10 minutes and 18 seconds. Sean, suffering two punctures, though, as I say. But this is the man in the rainbow jersey, Greg LeMond. You see the support being given to him by the huge crowds here. LeMond looking good for taking the yellow jersey at the end of this stage. But in the Pyrenees, he simply didn't have the strength in his legs. And he's coming in now. He's probably just going to break an hour and five minutes. But overall, it looks like he's not going to make the podium in Paris for being in the first three. That's very disappointing for him. Coming in, in fact, he's just... 1-105. 105-16 overall today, but overall a disappointing to a Fer Delgado. Indeed it is, and uh, a good consistent finish, a good consistent place for him, but uh, even his own teammate Alcala be, or Injuran rather beating him by two minutes. And here, the man probably of the moment, I think, of the stage possibly, Eric Breuking coming in. What a superb time he's doing. So Eric Breuking coming in, and he's going to take the stage surely with this time. This is a great time for Eric Breuking. We'll give you split checks on Chipucci and Lewand in a moment at 40 kilometers, but Eric Breuking, the Dutchman, coming in now. He must get inside 103.08 to beat Raul Alcala. He's been riding very well, and Breuking is indeed going to take first place. I think he'll hold on to that, and if so, that will give him two stage victories in the 1990 Tour, like Johnny Bunyu. Pat, a time check of the two front Yes, men. we just heard on race radio, at 40 kilometers to go, Le Monde went through in 52.40. Uh, Chipucci went through in 54.33, so it's just seven seconds short of two minutes now, the gap between Greg LeMond and Chipucci. So there's no doubt that this Tour de France is over. Greg LeMond is going to go on to win the Tour de France once again. One minute and 53 seconds of a lead for this man, Greg LeMond, driving on. We see Chipucci there, but really Chipucci, although we felt all along that he looked reasonably comfortable, you can probably tell by the difference in gears, by the way the legs are moving there. Confirmation, 143, the lead for LeMond. My statistician beside me is still scribbling here. 143, Parlement, and that's going to be too much for Chipucci. The little Italian has given it a game fight. He's held on to that yellow jersey for over a week since the time trial at Villard de Lens on Thursday of last week. He had a disastrous Saturday, if you remember it, on the stage to San at the end. He lost five minutes. Le Mans and those, and he said to us, you may have seen him being interviewed yesterday on RT, when he said that had he managed to stay with Claude Coquillion to get into the finish and hold on and only lose by four minutes on that stage, he would have had a minute lead and that would have been such an asset to him today. Pat, you still reckon those figures 
No, 52.50. We were given the wrong information for us. 52.40, we were told for Le Mans. It's 52.50 and 54.33. Interesting, you talk about the scenes here at the finish line. I noticed the police now uh, under a lot of pressure to try and keep the space clear. And one man in the middle of the hole for Ray here is Bernard Hino. Hino, who's well used to the situation, who has actually uh, driven, driven out with a fist in the past against the police. And here he is now trying to protect Le Mans' position on the finish line. So fascinating scenes here on the line. So, Greg LeMond coming around with just 250 metres to go, 103.23, he's not going to be Eric Goiking's time to win the stage, but that's not of any consequence, he looks like he's going to be Claudio Ciapucci, he's got a main lead of 1 minute and 43 seconds at the 40 kilometre point, Greg LeMond coming in 103.37, fifth on the day, but surely it's going to win him the 1990 Tour de France, and there the scramble begins, you see Hino beside him, a former teammate, Bernardino immediately on his left and tremendous squabbling going on. Look at that scene as the cameramen. It's like an igloo of human beings and cameras. Look at it going up into an oval shape over Le Mans' head, but Le Mans is able to cope with it. He's smiling off his bike. No bothers to Le Mans. And we look at poor Chipucci. Chipucci. Forgotten man at this stage. Look at the crowd on the left hand side, the cameras, the photographers trying to get Greg Le Mans through. And Le Mans in the sunglasses looking extremely relaxed. Why wouldn't he? Almost certainly he has confirmed another Tour victory. There's Greg Le Mans going up onto the podium, sitting down. He'll probably watch Chipucci coming in. And poor old Chipucci out on the road. Those people on the side, a lot of them have bring portable televisions with them for their cars. A lot of them have the radios. And I'm sure they're all talking about Le Mans. And poor old Claudio Chipucci must battle on, knowing the Tour is gone from him. He's held that yellow jersey. He's been battling for three weeks and a day, and at this stage, it doesn't really matter anymore. No, it doesn't really matter, and um, there's no doubt he's ridden a fantastic Tour de France. He's made a big name for himself on this tour, and he'll come back again, and I, I think he'll be a name to be reckoned with in the future. He's learned a lot. He's uh, come under a lot of pressure in this race. Remember, he's been in the top four from the, the first day of this race. He was one of the, let's, let's say he's the last of the gang of four that took that 10-minute lead on stage one. Brooking had one bad stage, and that one bad stage has cost him what could very well have been Tour victory, because had he been going against Le Mans today, it would have been a far more fascinating time trial. Oh, it certainly would, and uh, there's no doubt that, that, that uh, Brooking, whether he finished his second or third in the Tour of France uh, this year, he certainly has a Tour de France uh, victory in his legs. But uh, one kilometer, at one kilometer to go, he was, Chipucci was at 104.45. So he really only had a minute and a half to cover that last kilometre, and that, that, that is not a lot of time. He might just hold out, I feel, somehow or other. Well, this is a fascinating battle now as Chipucci comes around the last couple of bends. The crowd on the side, you'll notice they're not half as animated or excited as they were for Le Mans. They're applauding Chipucci's courage, but he's really got pressure on him now as he comes around about less than a minute to go. Less than a minute, 105.34, 105.35 is the time that's ticking away now. Chipucci really needs to start sprinting and go for that line now because uh, he's now got a half a minute now. 105.45 is, is on the clock now, so and we can see it now, 46, 47, yeah. And 102.40 is striking time. But remember, the time we need for Chibuchi is 106.11. If he can get inside 106.11, I think he's just going to do it. Well, he deserves it. He's been a great performer, and he's beaten the 106. Well done, Claudio Chibuchi. Disappointment overall. 105.58. The little Italian has failed in his bid for the Tour de France. He's smiling, it must be said. I don't know if you can see his face through the camera. He's just in front of us here at the commentary point. I don't know if that's a smile or a grimace. Certainly the Tour de France has gone from, there you see Lac de Vassivier, the scene of this fascinating duel between the two men. The American has emerged victorious. Greg LeMond has finished well ahead of Claudio Cipucci. And Greg LeMond, barring some incredible freak or disaster on the stage into Paris tomorrow, will retain his Tour de France title. There you see Eric Breuking coming out. Third place overall for him. Good tour for him. One bad stage, and Brighton being acknowledged for his victory now. So, Sean Kelly's teammate Eric Brighton finishing in third place overall. Sean Kelly will finish then around the 30th place. We'll have to wait, of course, for computer confirmation of that. But the crowd acknowledging Brighton's performance today. His second stage victory this year on the tour, both in individual time trials. 
And I'd imagine, despite the disappointment of Lozardi Den, he's pretty pleased with himself. He certainly looks happy there. Well, you can imagine the cheer that will be reserved for the presentation of the yellow jersey. There you see the scene. 22 beaches, man-made beaches around the lake here. Big, big tourist area here in France. Thousands of people around the lake here today to see Claudio Cipucci and Greg LeMond battle it out. And here we are, Greg LeMond, he's wearing the world champion jersey now, and now he's putting on the other most famous jersey in cycling, the yellow jersey of the Tour de France leader, and almost certainly the Tour de France winner. You see there, look at the lead he got. He beat Cipucci by two minutes and 21 seconds today. He was five seconds behind going into it, and he's he now two minutes and 16 seconds ahead of him overall. Superb performance by Le Mans, Le Mans, as we expected, despite the fact that Cipucci had better time trials than Le Mans in the Giro d'Italia. Come to Tour de France, Greg Le Mans is the man who proves the stronger, and it looks like victory for the Z team and Greg Le Mans. Well, and remember, his team signed him for five and a half million dollars. They wanted some return of significance. Well, they've got it now. There they are. They have their logo Z, the children's wear manufacturers from France. As we've told you before, they were inspired when they saw Le Mans on the podium in Paris. Lift up his little son. The manager, the owner of the Z company decided Le Mans was the man to have for their product. Ideal, deal, a man with a young child. And five and a half million dollars is what it took to encourage Le Mans to sign for Z. But certainly it's justified now as Le Mans almost certainly has the Tour 1 for a second year in succession and the third time in all. And remember in between that he was accidentally shot by his brother-in-law in a hunting accident, missed the 87 Tour because of that dreadful accident and was lucky to survive it. 88 then on his comeback he suffered injury again. There you see Greg now and for him, everything must be pretty wonderful. Let's see what he has to Thank say. You. Merci. Ça va. Big time, I'd say. Yeah, he's with Paul. Big time. I promise not to ask any stupid questions. What, what you, okay. What was it for, Greg's still wondering what's going what on. What was the total time for the time? The total yeah, yeah, time yeah, yeah. by Brooking was one hour, yeah. two minutes and 40 seconds. Oh, that's my time in Yeah, five. you're leading by 2.16. Two, Something about the same. Greg. 1.337 you did. Okay. Greg, now so that you've you see got Greg on now talking to Paul Show and former professional cyclist. Let's hear what Greg has to say. Well, that's for sure. I'm, uh, it's like a big, uh, big pressure off my shoulder right now. I was, I've been so nervous. I, the last, uh, since these are already down. Actually, since I... I had that near uh, near loss of the Tour de France with my flat tire. I've been uh, very nervous and very worried. But uh, you, you had a lot of up and downs at the start of the year. When you came to the Tour, were you convinced that you could be up on the podium at the end? Oh, after the Tour Switzerland, I knew that I was going to be good, yeah. When I got second in the prologue, I knew that uh, I was going to have a good Tour. But you just never know. It's, uh, tour is always a surprising thing. Usually, though, in the end, it works out, and the strongest usually wins. But on the day to lose Ardi Den, everybody expected that that was the day that Claudio Ciapucci would be wiped away from the leaderboard, and yet he ended up in front, and nobody would help for you to chase him. Uh, yeah, he uh, played it very, very smart. He uh, went away, and it gained two and a half minutes. Once you gained two and a half minutes, he really took most of the time on the downhill descent and the flats, and uh, it's hard to take that back on the uphill. 